the Northwestern Wildcats have upset the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Big time! It's, it's all over! over. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to another season of the Gary Barnett Show, featuring the head football coach of the Northwestern Wildcats. I'm Dave Ennett. Glad to have you with us for another exciting season of Northwestern football. It could not have begun in more exciting fashion, Gary. A 17-15 victory of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, as I guess everybody knows by now. And uh, yet it seems your reaction the past few days has been uh, wondering what everybody was so surprised about. Well, I, th I think that's the way I want it to feel like from our own uh, team and from our coaches, but, but I've uh, come to really realize what a great win this has been for the university and for all the supporters that have, that have followed Northwestern football for years and years and years, and I was just happy to be a part of it. Well, you know, it would seem, Gary, to be every coach's dream to be carried off the field by his team in Notre Dame <laughs> Stadium, and yet you told your players to do just the opposite. Well, if, if we do it again, I'm going to let them do it. But uh, uh, I wanted them to know that I believed in this victory and how much we were going to have it as much as they did. And um, that was my way of uh, putting a little icing on a cake or just taking a little one more step further. And let them act like they've been there before. I want them to act like they've been there before, and I wanted, I wanted to act like I'd been there before. Well, we're going to take a look at the first half highlights of this exciting Northwestern victory over the Fighting Irish. We're going to do it out on the beautiful waters of Lake Michigan in just a moment as the SS Wildcats set sail on the Gary Barnett Show. Stick around. Congratulate Northwestern. Their players played very, very well. Uh, they only had the one turnover the one we created. I thought their quarterback played well, Autry ran well, and they protected the passer pretty well. I thought we played well on defense, except we had problems on third down. Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show, and uh, there's nothing wrong with your television. We are cruising the waters of Lake Michigan, and uh, you can see behind us, Gary, one of the prettiest sites, the Northwestern Campus, which is, uh, it's pretty when you're on land, and it's pretty as well from the water. Well, I thought it'd be a great idea, Dave, to show uh, our viewers, especially those people who don't get a chance to really uh, see our campus, just to see what we have here. I mean, we're right on uh, Lake Michigan, as you can obviously see, most of the campus is right on the water. We have our own beach. Uh, we sit here, and you and I can see uh, the city of Chicago from here, and it's just an unbelievable setting for a, for a major university. Yeah, this isn't a bad little gig right here. Now, <laughs> we also ought to show our viewers the highlights of the first half of the game against Notre Dame. Well, I think, uh, I hope they enjoy them as much as I did because uh, it was truly uh, just a, a great day for Northwestern University and for our players. And, uh, and like I said earlier, I, I was just blessed to be a part of it. Let's take a look. Gary, the Wildcats take the field in South Bend. An enthusiastic entrance by your team and by some of your fans. Well, actually, uh, uh, David, we were, we were ready to go. We were pretty focused when we came out. And if you, see, if you see that picture, there was a ball that came on the field on the first play. And uh, it really could have affected that play. should have been called dead. Close call here with Dwayne Bates on the receiving end of a Steve Schnur pass. Yeah, Dwayne was just out of bounds, and Steve took a shot on that play. Now here's a big play by your defense to recover this fumble. Well, this ball just bounces out of Kinder's chest, and Danny Sutter's right there to pick it up, and a big turnover for us early in this game. Danny Sutter, your leading tackler each of the last two years, and then Darnell Autry takes over. Well, we had a great line blocking in there uh, by Rob Johnson and uh, Ryan Padgett, and Darnell makes about 15 yards, I think, on that play. And he'll carry again for 14. This is a nice job of reading the, reading the uh, offensive blocking scheme and uh, another 15-yard, 16-yard gain for us, and we're moving the ball pretty well right now. Third and goal here upcoming with Steve Schnur, and he's going to look to the corner. Well, this is a route that we knew was going to be there, uh, and we just went right to it the minute we got in that position. You see Dave Beasley go right in the drums there, but that was a great throw by Steve and a catch by Dave Beasley, and, and we go up right away 6 and nothing. Now, Notre Dame on offense here, and Hadefe Ishmaeli, number three, was getting in Ron Palace's face all day. Uh, Hudefe had a great game, and he is so quick, he's hard to block off that corner, and he made a great play there. A couple of key fourth down plays for Notre Dame. Here's one. This is a nice stop by Pat uh, Fitzgerald, and uh, it's a fourth down call, and uh, he lets him catch the ball but not get the first down, and that's what you want to do there is you want to drop deep enough to where you can break up on the ball. I like the way things were going at that point, second quarter, and your guys with the ball again. Well, this is uh, Steve to uh, Matt Hartle, and Matt's a redshirt freshman and picks up about 17, 18 yards there. 
that was a big catch for him and uh, put our put our offense in good position. And here's the combination: Palace to Derek Mays, the familiar tandem for Notre Dame. Well, we just overrun that route with our uh, middle linebacker, and it was a third down st uh, situation. We we needed to make that play. Robert Farmer. Yeah, he they score here and uh, uh, right away, and uh, it was it was a nice play by Notre Dame and. Uh, right there you'll see a bad snap and that was a key play in that series right there and uh, uh, they lost that extra point and that really put them in a bind later on. Well Gary that missed extra point turned out to be the difference on the scoreboard 10 to 9 at halftime. The uh, snap was bad and uh, so I don't know if that uh, their kicker really had a chance to make that that uh, kick but uh, uh, you know we were ahead going in and of course that felt good we felt like we were in control, that uh, we had a few adjustments that we had to make, but uh, nothing major. We had a good second half plan on offense and a good second half plan on defense, Dave, that uh, we knew we had to uh, put to use and, and uh, we were ready to go. A business-like mood at halftime? really was. Uh, no one in the locker room was uh, surprised that we were ahead uh, and uh, we had trained ourselves, trained our team to play a second half. Uh, we'd split our practices so that we could do that, so we were ready to go out. The best was yet to come for Northwestern, and we'll be back to take a look at the second half right after this. I think I'm the only kid that's not Irish and not Catholic in the entire area. <laughs> I'm the only kid that'll actually admit it. Uh, yeah, it is the heart of Notre Dame territory uh, down there. and. Uh, Winning this game will give me a lot of bragging rights over a lot of people. It's kind of a uh, vendetta I've had against the neighborhood that I've got out of <laughs> to uh, have the opportunity to play Notre Dame and then have an opportunity to beat them. Rob Johnson, the senior tri-captain of the Wildcats, the center at St. Francis de Sales, and one guy, Gary, who was especially happy uh, being a native Chicagoan and a guy who had said during the week that it was a goal of his when he came to Northwestern to line up against and beat Notre Dame. Well, and Rob uh, announced his uh, purpose <laughs> in the Big Ten luncheon, and so everybody knew uh, where Rob was coming from and what he wanted uh, going into this game. Well, let's take a look at the second half, Northwestern against the Fighting Irish. Gary, as you kick off to start the second half, Sam Valenzizzi was booming him all day. He did a great job. This one goes uh, deep in the end zone, and uh, those are the ones we want where they can't return him. And, uh, Sam hurt his wrist later on on the kick, but uh, on a tackle. Ron Paulus was under pressure all day, and here it's Matt Rice. Matt played a great game. He played as fine a game as I've seen a defensive lineman play in a long time, and uh, that was one of the four sacks that we had for the day. From your 45-yard line again, a great run here by Darnell. This was really a great check by Steve Schnur. Uh, we, he recognized the defense, got Darnell into the counter play, and then Darnell broke it for about 30 yards. Your second touchdown upcoming here, and uh, Boy, Dwayne Bates, we've talked about him, and a great throw, too, by Steve. Well, it's a good fake by Steve and by the by our uh, running backs, and Dwayne got himself open, and Steve threw a rope right there, and Dwayne does a good job of getting in the end zone. And for Richard Freshman, that's a, that's a big play in a big game. It's a 17-9 ball game, and again, Darnell Autry. Well, Darnell uh, creases him for about 20 yards here. We had a holding penalty on one of these plays, and we really would have put our offense in, in key position. Notre Dame with the ball here, and uh, Farmer coughs it up. Casey Daly makes a big play for it. Our guys, uh, our coach has done a great job of teaching our players to strip that ball. And here's a holding call right here, and, and uh, that was a good run. It brings it back. We were going to be in good scoring position again. So there's the holding call. But upcoming, we'll see Steve Schnur. And there's your reaction. I guess that says it all, huh? That sort of does, I think. <laughs> Steve will find Dave Beasley here, and boy, yeah, I'll tell you, your receivers took some good shots from Notre Dame defenders. Yeah, well, look at the shot that Steve takes here after making this throw, and uh, so you want to be a quarterback, huh? But it was a great throw and a great catch, and uh, then Palace comes back here and makes a makes a nice throw, but uh, uh, we break it up. Uh, they call it a completion. Yeah, well, that stops the drive in any event. Now here on the option. Well, this uh, we had a corner out of position here, and this was a big play for them. And uh, starts their drive a little bit. We should have been in a little better position to make that play. 17 to nine as we approach uh, midway of the fourth quarter, and Randy Kinder will take it in. 
That's another good play by Matt Rice, but he's uh, Kinder forces him in the end zone and makes a nice run. Uh, our defense did a decent job down here, and then this is a two-point play, and you, you see Palace gets tripped up by his uh, his center, and uh, and that keeps us in the lead. Now time running down, and this is the play that really uh, brought the game to an end for you guys. That was a fourth down stop by Matt Rice, and it was just a great, great football play. And a very happy Gary Barnett and the Wildcats celebrate a victory over the Fighting Irish, 17 to 15. The coaches, we take a look at some of the stats in the football game. Rushing yards, 181. Passing yards, 166. I like that balance, uh, Dave, and it's critical as we go on through the year that we can maintain that kind of balance. Uh, I think that's what I want. That's how we want our team to be. We want to be just about that proportion, and uh, you're much less predictable. And I think what I'm also impressed with is our defensive stat. Uh, Notre Dame only having three of 13 uh, uh, third down possessions. And like you said, I think you said uh, none in the second half. And that's if you play that kind of defense in the league that we're going to play. That's critical stuff. Well, the reactions varied after the ball game. Let's go back to South Bend and hear from some of the players and coaches. Northwestern, 27-point underdogs. Are the Wildcats this good, or is Notre Dame this bad? Very disappointing. It's very difficult, and, uh, but that's all part of life. Before we left the hotel today, I told our players that I did not want to be carried off the field, that we were going to go over and act like we had done this before. And so at that time, I was pretty sure we were going to win the game. But I really knew we were going to win the game <laughs> when there wasn't any time left on the clock. Coach Gary Barnett of Northwestern mixed it up perfectly. A sophomore, Darnell Autry, ran like Dennis Lundy used to against Notre Dame, only better. 160 yards on 33 carries. Darnell Autry, the player of the game. In particular, myself, I wanted to contribute to the team. I wanted, the team that sh I wanted to show the team that I could play and that I could you know, support them as much as they supported me. It's kind of hard to put it into words. I think uh, I think this is you know big 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 turning uh, turning point for our program. You know, we uh, this is something you dream about since you're a little kid. I mean, guys are in there hugging, crying. I mean, it's it, it's a great feeling. Well, how about that Northwestern quarterback Steve Schnur? He was cool as can be all day, completing 14 of 28 passes for 166 yards and two touchdowns. While Ron Paulus and the Notre Dame offense sputtered all game with broken plays bad snaps and a total lack of cohesion. I think we looked sick today. I think it was awful. I think um, there was not one good thing or very few good things that come out of the offense today. I, I think um, fumbles, bobbled snap, I had some late throws, I had a throw tipped you know, by the linebackers, stuff that shouldn't be happening, stuff like that shouldn't be happening. So you've heard briefly from some of the players. In a moment, you're going to hear from one of Northwestern's many heroes on Saturday, quarterback Steve Schnur, as we continue with the Gary Barnett Show right after this. Hey, Dave, you caught any fish here yet? I'm still working on it, Coach. You got a bite. Hey. Pleased to have with us now on the Gary Barnett Show, a man very much in demand these days, fresh off an appearance on Good Morning America, the national media has been calling the Wildcats senior quarterback Steve Schnur. Steve, what have the past few days been like for you since the victory over Notre Dame? Uh, they've been kind of crazy. I think, uh, I think it's, it's, you know, it was a great win for Northwestern and uh, the media, the media has really played it up in the public. and. Uh, you know, I think it's just now starting to set on us what it means. Steve's from uh, St. Louis, attended University High School down there. Have you heard from a lot of the folks back home? Yeah, I just heard from my coach, um, heard from my parents. They were at the game and, uh, you know, numerous friends and family. Uh, the people back home decorated my house purple and white. So uh, when my parents got home, they had a nice reception. Has it sunk in yet what you guys accomplished? I think it's starting to. I mean, uh, you know, you're on national TV for something. I think, uh, I think it, it lets you know that there was something significant about it. You know, 14 out of 28, 166 yards passing, and two touchdowns. One to Dave Beasley in the first quarter. One to Dwayne Bates in the third quarter. That uh, pass by Dave Beasley made everybody's highlight film as he cartwheeled into the band in the quarter. 
Yeah, Dave. Uh, Dave got pushed into the band members, and uh, I don't think he was hurt on the play, but uh, but it worked out fine. And uh, the, the one to Dwayne is another great call by the coaches, and uh, we, you know, we we run those plays more the times of practice, and that's what you do it for, you know. Steve, you had to wait your turn behind Northwestern's all-time passing leader, Len Williams. You finally got your chance to play, and I suppose now, as you look back, it was worth the wait. Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, if I could go back and do it all over again and have this opportunity to beat Notre Dame at Notre Dame, uh, I'd do it all again just the same. Are you kind of glad to get this week off as you get ready for Miami of Ohio on the 16th? Yeah, it helps a lot. It, um, you know, I think I think the, the players, you know, need some time to, to let this sink in and let it let us put it behind our for ourselves so that we can uh, so we can focus on Miami now. All right, well, congratulations on a great victory and good luck against the Redskins. Thank you. Steve Schnurr, the Wildcats senior starting quarterback. The one reason the Wildcats have gotten off to a good start this year is the hard work they put in in the offseason in the weight room. Our goal is to be the strongest, most physical team in the country. And uh, we're on our way. These guys worked their butts off this summer. Uh, this is the strongest team we've ever fielded here at Northwestern. Come on, come on, come on! This is where it all begins. Uh, if you don't have the strength or anything, you know, you're just going through the motions, you're not going to do as well as you would uh, keeping up with everybody else. Everybody else is doing it. Everyone has a good time. You know, you get a little uh, aggressive, especially during the squat and power clean days. Uh, it's good atmosphere to be in. You know, it's all the guys around, very competitive, uh, but not uh, me. Who are some of the guys that are a little uh, more off the wall in here, would you say? Well, Jeff Shine's off the wall. He's definitely off the wall. Yeah, he's got a reputation in here. He's, uh, you know, he's got all the tools, strength, speed, uh, you know, a little crazy upstairs, but that's good. <laughs> He really knows what he's doing, and uh, without him, you know, I don't know how strong any of us would be. When you mention Larry Lilly, everyone gets down on two knees, and he knows everything that there is to know about weightlifting and conditioning and stuff like that. He's a fitness and strength god. He, he's the guru of it all. He, he's, the, he's the man behind every physique in this weight room. We have a great program here, but the key to our, you know, the progress we've made is the attitude of our athletes. I mean, it, it makes my job so much easier when you've got somebody who's really hungry to get to the next level. Um, and these guys, like I said, they, they really worked hard this summer. And, uh, you know, it shows. The better we lift in here, the better we do on the field. And the stronger we are, the better we'll play, and the less chance we have of getting injured the longer we stay in the game. All three again. Gary, I don't think there's been anybody happier this uh, fall camp than your strength coach, Larry Lilja, with the hard work you guys have put in in there. Uh, no question, Dave, and, uh, and that room is where college football players are made uh, in every program throughout the country. Uh, they have to be transformed from high school players and they have the strength that it takes to play at this level. And uh, Larry Lilja is the best of business. He is wonderful. and He's a Northwestern grad and he loves those players and he's just done a great job getting our kids ready to play this season. And they've come back big and strong and it showed on Saturday. Well it sure, sure did and, and we're just uh, we're well conditioned as much as anything and, and I give Larry a lot of that credit. All right we're gonna come back and we're gonna take a look ahead of the Wildcats next game against the Miami of Ohio Redskins at Dyke Stadium as we continue on the Gary Barnett Show. Dave, I'm getting tired of this. I had a good week. Let me show you how this is done. Fish, get in the boat. How'd you do that? It's good, it's good week, Dave. It's such an honor to be to be picked captain by a team. Whether or not the fact that I'm a kicker, I, I don't think really has much to do with that. I, I'm just, I mean, I was, I was speechless. I didn't know how, I mean, I've never had someone, I've never, I've never been honored like that before um, by a group of guys who I, care about that much. Gary Sam Valentizzi, your senior tri-captain who responded after his teammates voted him captain. Well, they finally found a way to shut me up. <laughs> well, that doesn't happen very often with Sam. <laughs> uh, 
Sam's like the energizer bunny on our team, but uh, uh, he's a walk-on in our program. Sam's done a great job. He has worked himself and made himself into a great kicker and a great weapon for us, and, and he's, he's an inspirational guy around our, our players and our young players, and I was so pleased for Sam when they voted him captain. Well, you get the bye week this week, and then you get ready to play Miami of Ohio, the Redskins at Dyke Stadium a week from Saturday. I would think this is probably a good time to get the week off. Well, I think it is. Uh, we need it. To, one, we need it to work. You know, we've got to get better. Uh, secondly, we've had a lot of distractions this week with uh, with the things that have happened around the Notre Dame victory, and so uh, it'll be good for us to get back to work and, and get our feet back on the ground. I know one thing you wanted to see, Gary, is uh, the establishment of real home field advantage at Dyke Stadium, so you come back to play Miami there in a couple of weeks and, and hope to see some fans in the stands rooting for you. Well, we have to, Dave. In order for us to create a home field advantage, we have to create a hostile environment for teams to come in. That's the way it is when we go places, and it's what makes it hard to play on the road. We've got to we've got to have the same sort of advantage if we're going to make a move in this league. Not going to be much time for you to be out cruising the lake in the days ahead. Yeah, this is you're catching me on a one-time deal here, uh, in it. Fair enough. All right, we will be back with you again. And we want the Gary Barnett Show to take a look at the game with the Miami of Ohio. Now for Gary Barnett, I'm Dave Bennett. Thanks very much for being with us, everybody, and happy sailing. So, uh, Dave, I'm getting tired of this. I had a good week. Let me show you how this is done. Yeah. Fish, get in the boat. How'd you do that? It's a good, it's a good week, Dave.